Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. Uh, welcome to everyone that's watching, that has subscribed, that likes our stuff, that shares our stuff. Please keep doing what you guys do. You guys are the best. I hope you're doing alright. Uh, and for um new people that are coming to this channel for the first time, like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. Feel free to like our content. Uh, share it and everything else um, and everything else so yeah don't forget to subscribe like and share our content and if there's something that you guys want us to react to please always suggest it down below we'll be more than glad to react to it so today i'm going to be reacting to the most effective system to stop racism i mean to that so without wasting time let's get into the video So he says, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak. Now if I quote this, you see, if you ask any Christian missionary, who is the spirit of truth? He says, the Holy Ghost. He will tell you, it's the Holy Ghost. Ask him. You got the Holy Ghost? He said, yes. Your church? He said, yes. Every church and denomination in Christendom claim the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, they call it. You ask the Jehovah's Witness, you got it? You say yes. Seventh day Adventist, you got it. The Anglican, he's got it. The Lutheran, he's got it. The Roman Catholic, everyone. One thousand sects and denomination among the whites of South Africa in my country, they got it. And three thousand among the blacks, sects and denominations, they got it. What the Holy Ghost? I'm asking, what did the Holy Ghost tell you in two thousand years? Which Jesus already didn't give it to you in so many different words. Give me one. Only one new thing, new thing. Jesus, I have yet many. I said in English, many means more than one. He will guide you into all truth. I said all in English means more than one. I don't want more than one. I want only one. And for 40 years I'm asking, learned men of Christianity gave me one new thing that the Holy Ghost gave you in 2000 years to any church. Any church. Bring it. I want to hear. There is it. I said we have problems. We have problems. The biggest problem is race. In the world today, race, racism. We are all racist. I said all, we are all racist. Nobody is exempt from this devilishness, this sickness of racism. No matter how much we boast. We Muslims might say that we are the least racist. But you can't say we are pure from that sickness. Nobody is pure. The Jews said we are the children of Abraham. We are the children of David. The rest of the world, we are the children of Israel. The rest of the world was Goim. What is Goim? Ask him. Gentile. What is Gentile? Unclean. Filthy, dirty, uncircumcised people. You. Pig eaters. You. That's how he is. The rest of the world. The Arab, you know what the Arab said? He says we are the Arabs. You know what it means? We are an eloquent people. You see, in my language, the Arab says, I can give you a hundred synonyms for a sword. I can give you a hundred synonyms for a horse. In your language, how many can you give? Maybe half a dozen. Half a dozen. For a horse. Half a, half a dozen for a sword. He said, you see, compared to me, you are dumb. So he says, you are ajam. Ajam means dumb. We are the Arabs. The eloquent people and the rest of the world is dumb. Like animals. That's his, that's, that's his racism. And my people in India, we say we are the Aryans, we are the master race. And the rest of the India are achut, untouchables. <laughs> ask the British, they'll tell you something about themselves as I can say that. Ask the Germans, they'll tell you something as I can say that. This is man, any man, every man. Sickness, that we are all sick. Now how to eliminate this sickness? You see, it's very easy for anybody to talk about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Very easy. There is but only one father, our creator, Lord and cherisher, God Almighty. And we are all his children. That's talk. 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 How do you implement it? System. You require a system. Talking is easy. Preaching is easy. How do you implement that brotherhood? Judaism hasn't got it. Christianity hasn't got it. Jesus Christ himself, he discriminated in his own time. 
He says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I have only come for the Jews. He is telling his disciples, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what he did. Himself in his lifetime, he never preached to a single non-Jew. In his lifetime. A Greek woman, she had a problem. She, her daughter was suffering some incurable sickness. So she brings her daughter to him. He said, Master, heal my daughter. So he turns his face away. She goes on the other side. He said, Master, please. Drowning men clutches at straws. Drowning women do the same. My daughter's life is at stake. Please help her. So the disciples said, look, this woman, she won't let us, let us go. She'll pester us, our life out of her, heal her daughter. So he says, do not throw the bread of the children to the dogs. These Greeks are dogs. My children are the Jews. My, what I brought, the spiritual blessing. He's not talking about bread. He's talking about spiritual blessings. Goodness, he said, that is for my children, the Jews. These rest of them, the Greeks and the Romans and all are dogs. You mustn't throw, do not throw that which is holy unto dogs. Do not throw pearls before swine. I'm asking who are the dogs and who are the swines? The non-Jew. That's his teaching. Now man, you say, now we open our churches to all races now. After 300 years in South Africa, for the first time, they say, now we open our churches to all people. After 300 years. For 300 years, you can't have a black bishop. You had to rule every Christian. In Indonesia, in India, wherever the white man must rule, you held the reins because you were racist. Now, Jesus had given it to you. He said, no, my children and the dogs are separate things. In his lifetime, now this woman, she is a drowning person. Her daughter's life is at stake. So she says, Master, even the dogs have crumbs from the master's table. That was too much for him. So he said, give her the crumbs. And the daughter was healed. The crumbs of the blessings. His food, his bread, was for his own children, the Jews. But I say system, even whatever you claim, you require a system to change the hearts and minds of people. Now, the Muslim is the only guy who has the system. Five times a day, the Mu'azzin, the caller goes on top of the minaret and he shouts in a loud sonorous voice, it's Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. He repeats it four times. It's Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. He said, I bear witness that there is no other object to worship but Allah, God Almighty. He's the only one who deserves to be worshipped. He repeats it twice. He said, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He is not God. He is not his son. Don't make a mistake like the others have done. They made the prophets into gods. They made the heroes into gods. Don't you do that. The Muslim is warned. And Alhamdulillah, this sickness hasn't got us yet. Of worshipping Muhammad as a god. Mm, there isn't such thing. He repeats it twice. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. If you accept these two fundamentals, that there is but one God and Muhammad is his messenger. What is the message? He continues. Hayya ala salat, this has come to prayer. Hayya ala salat, this has come to prayer. Hayya ala falah, this has come to success. Because this is real success. That you remind yourselves about your duties and obligations towards your creator and your duties and obligations towards your fellow human beings. If you want to be successful, there is no other way. And he winds up the call by saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is still the greatest, Allah is still the greatest. Whether you come or you don't come, you are not going to lower him in his exaltation, in his majesty, in his glory, he will ever remain supreme. And the final words of warning, the Mu'azzin gives, the caller gives, Ke la ilaha illallah, that there is no other object of, but, of worship but Allah. You can carry on worshipping your man gods, your women gods, your money gods, but remember this, that the only one who deserves to be worshipped is Allah. And the Muslim hearkens to the call. Holy Prophet Muhammad said that when you stand up for prayer, you must not leave gaps for the devil to get in between you and your brother. This devil that Muhammad وسلم, was talking about was not the guy we see in our art galleries. In my country, in Durban, there's, in the art gallery, there's a huge painting by some great artist. You see in that painting a beautiful woman with wings, well proportioned, and she's got a wand in her hand and she's directing the devil to go to hell. And in the picture you can see the devil flying off, 
ready complexion, red, 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 with horns and sharp ears and a tail with a barbed hook. And you see the hellfire in the distance. In the picture, you can see all that. <laughs> I said, Muhammad wasn't talking about that. A devil like that with a tail with a barbed hook. I said, if you see one, you run for dear life. Me too, I run for dear life. <laughs> you stand there and, and reason with him? You listen to him? Never! Devil comes in a beautiful form. Allah makes things appealing to you, so you get caught. He comes in that form, you run. <laughs> Muhammad wasn't talking about that. He was talking about you, yourself. He was talking about you. Your racial pride, your arrogance, your riches. I am white, he's black. I am rich, he's poor. That devil must not be allowed to come in between you and your brother. No gaps left. This is what Muhammad, five times a day, we get together and we finish off our prayer. Go and watch them at, in the mosque. Sometimes prayer time. Ask the Muslim friends if you know. They say, look, we want to see how you people pray. And you watch. When they finish off, they say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So peace and blessings will go to everybody to the right of me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So peace and blessings have got to everybody to the left of me. When I did this, I see an African there. When I did that, I see a Chinese here. When I did it again, next time I see a white man there. Next time I see a colored guy there. I see an Eskimo this side. So in my heart and mind, this is my brother, this is my brother, this is my brother, this is my brother. System, system of eliminating this racism. We are still racist. The sickness is there, it hasn't left us. But the system makes you the least racist. I'm st still ashamed to say that we are not free from the sickness. Whether you are a Pakistani, or you are a Bangladeshi, or you are a Punjabi, or you are a Turk, or you are an Arab, I say we are all sick. The system is there to eliminate these feelings of racism out of you. Then on a Friday, bigger gathering. Then once in a lifetime you go for pilgrimage, and there you see, this is the Chinese, Muslims, and the guy from Ethiopia is black as coal, my brother. And the guy from Turkey with blonde hair and blue eyes, my brother. I didn't imagine all this. To me, all Muslims are so look like me. Now I see an Ethiopian is a Muslim and the Madrasi is a Muslim and the Chinese is a Muslim. Ah, my brother, my brother, my brother. A system of bringing people together and working out this poison of racism. There's anything that I enjoy watching is Amit Dad videos. I really, really enjoy his lectures. And um, well, racism is something we're all suffering from. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't just doesn't matter, you know. Um, there's always going to be a group of people that think they're better than you, or you're always going to find yourself feeling like you're lower than certain people in life which shouldn't be the case we're all humans at the end of the day i always say this we're always we're, we're all humans why do you feel the need to feel like you're less than someone with a different skin color than you why should you feel less than someone who's richer than you it doesn't make sense at all and i like that he's mentioned in a system because let's look at this pandemic that we faced whether we liked it or not whether you got the job or not you still found yourself wearing a mask, didn't you? Because the system required us to be in masks, to be masked up and to protect ourselves. So how do you get rid of racism? Well, it starts with you. Even though other people are not doing it, even though the system isn't there, it starts with you. First start by acknowledging, saying, this is my brother, this is my sister, nothing else. Don't look at this person and say, oh, okay, she's Zambian, yes, that's my sister. Okay, she's from Zimbabwe, that's my sister or brother. No, everyone should be. It doesn't matter how they look, doesn't matter their height, doesn't matter how they speak, how they sound. It all really doesn't matter. It's really, really up to us and to choose what we want in life. We can't let someone dictate how we look at other people. We watch movies where they said, where they continuously show 
certain groups in inferior um levels on inferior levels and others praised which we have to change the narrative for ourselves if we don't change it for ourselves no one else will otherwise we're all the same no one is more superior than the other person and just be good to each and every person that you meet out there lend help to everyone that comes your way or they should lend help to you as well too it's not a one-sided thing it starts with you then the people that you hang around with then it spreads as long as we de if we can defeat that then there's hope for humanity and there's more there's more things we can achieve but that's another topic for another day let me know what you guys think about racism what you have to say what you think your thoughts how we can get rid of it all of that will be appreciated if there's something you guys want me to react to drop the link down below and i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video